Hello, in this video tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to run your automated tests in a CI CD fashion using Jenkins in order to integrate your test results with TestRail. To set up the pipeline, I'm using a local Jenkins instance running in a Docker container. For our automated tests, I have a simple PyTest and Selenium project, which will be fetched from the TestRail GitHub repository. Let's create a new job by clicking on New Item in Jenkins. I will create two Jenkins jobs. First, a basic job to show a freestyle project with a shell script, and then a more advanced pipeline project using Jenkins pipeline syntax in case you want to level up your CI CD practices. I'm going to call the first one PyTest Freestyle, select the freestyle project, and click on OK. Here you can see some configurations for the job, but I want to do the basic configurations to get the pipeline running. The first step is setting up our source code management using the Git repository. I'm going to select Git and enter my repository URL, which can be fetched from your GitHub repository. You just need to navigate to Code and copy this URL. Back to Jenkins, I'm going to add the URL here. Now I have a valid Git repository. There are a couple more details you need to set. The branch must be main, not master, because that's the convention I'm using in the repository. Let's skip the build triggers, the build environment, and go straight to the build steps, which is where you configure what the job is going to do. Let's add a build step, which will execute a shell script. Just going to enlarge this field so we have a better work area to write the script. The first step of the script should be go to test project folder. The project I want to use is under Samples, Python, PyTest, Selenium. In this repository, there are a couple of sample projects, but this is the one I want to use in this case. The second step is creating the Python virtual environment. To do so, execute this command, which calls Python 3.10, and sets up an environment by using the VENV module. The new environment will be on this path. Then, Activate the environment by using the dot syntax and the path to the environment activation. Now I can install the test project and execute it. First use pip to install the requirements which are in the requirements.txt file. Then run the command to execute the tests. This detail is very important to integrate with the test rail CLI. This tells the framework to generate the JUnit report which will be parsed by the CLI. You just have to use the JUnit XML option, then pass the path to your tests. And there's another little detail here, which is using this double pipe syntax and then creating a variable with the exit code. I'm doing this because if the tests fail, I don't want the script to fail. This will store the exit code in this variable so I can use it wherever I want and the script will continue. The next step is installing the test rail CLI and sending the results. I'm going to use pip to install, and then just call the test rail CLI. Over here, you just need to pass the credentials and the URL for your test rail instance, and the project where you want to create the tests. Finally, send the command parse JUnit and the title for the automated tests run. For the description, I'm going to use this build URL, a built in variable in Jenkins, which has the URL to this build so you can navigate from test rail to the actual build. The last thing is the path to the report you want to parse and send the results to test rail. I'm going to exit with the original exit code which I saved in that variable because if the tests fail, I want this job to fail as well. Now let's save this job. To run it, I simply click on build now. I see that my build has been scheduled and I can see it running here. Let's click it and see the console output to have some feedback. It's creating my virtual environment, installing the test project, it takes a couple seconds to install everything, and now it's running the tests. In the CI environment, they're running in the background. Okay, all the tests are executed, one failed, and two passed. Next step, as you already know, is installing the test rail CLI and executing it to send in the results. The CLI found three test cases, and it's checking the project on test rail to check that it fulfills all the prerequisites. You need to have the automation ID custom field in place before using this approach. 
Now it's creating the three test cases in TestRail. Then it's going to create a test run and add the results for each case. I can see that the CLI already created the test run, and now it's uploading the test artifacts, attachments on test results, which might be screenshots, logs, etc. And the build finished as a failure. This is expected because one test failed, and I want the build to fail as well when that happens. With the integration complete, I can go straight to my test run by clicking here. In the test run, you can see that I have three tests, two of them passed, and one failed. If I click on the failed test, you will see all the artifacts. Here is the stack trace for the failure, and over here the artifacts. The log file and a screenshot of the failure so you can debug. Another important detail is the CI build URL. If the information on the test result isn't enough for you, you can click on this URL and it will redirect you to your build in Jenkins. And I've just achieved a full integration of a PyTest and Selenium project with TestRail using a CI CD tool in just a couple of minutes. As I promised in the beginning, now let's do the same using Jenkins pipelines. I'm going to be real quick. Back to the Jenkins homepage, I'm going to create a new item and call it PyTest Pipeline. I'm going to select the pipeline project and click on OK. I will use none of the UI features, only the pipeline syntax down here in the pipeline definition. I'm going to use a pipeline script and write everything in this field. Let's do this. Let's start by adding the base skeleton for a pipeline, which has the pipeline element block. Inside it, there's an agent declaration here. I'm using any agent because I have only one configured in this instance. Then, the stages block. The stages will be the same four steps configured for the freestyle project. The checkout to check our repository, the setup of the virtual environment, the execution of the automated tests, and reporting using the test rail CLI. The last two steps are inside the same stage, which is divided in two parts. One part is within the steps where I'm going to run the automated test project, and the second part is a post block, which will report the results. This post block is helpful because it allows me to run this block, whether the test project failed or passed, so I don't need to worry about controlling the variables. Let's do our checkout step first. For the steps here, all I need to do is call the git command and pass in the URL, which is the URL for the repository, you've already seen that, and pass in the branch, which is main. Then you need to create a virtual environment. To do that, just use an sh command to invoke a shell, and go to the test project folder, in this case, PyTest Selenium. You set up the virtual environment by calling the same command I used on the freestyle project. Finally, you need to execute the tests and send in the results. To execute the tests, I'm going to paste another shell command here. I'm going to open the test project folder, activate the virtual environment, install the project using pip, and run the project. Over here, I don't need that variable to control the execution status because I have this post block like I mentioned. So let's configure the post block. I'm going to add a couple of things. This post block has an always block inside it, which means whether the test fails or not, it's always going to run. Over here, I'm going to save the JUnit report. This is an optional step, but it shows the JUnit report inside Jenkins as well. And I'm going to archive my artifacts, so I can check the screenshots, logs, etc. also inside Jenkins. This might be useful, although it is optional for the integration with TestRail. Then let's execute another shell script. Once again, we go to the project folder, activate the virtual environment, install the CLI using pip, and execute the CLI. This is exactly the same I did for the freestyle project, basically sending in the URL and credentials, the test project, and the test run title. I changed the title to Pipeline Project instead of Freestyle Project to differentiate them, and the build URL over here. With the whole script done, I'm going to save this here, and run it by clicking on Build Now. Having a pipeline view is better than a freestyle job because you can see all the stages. So the checkout was okay, setting up the virtual environment should also be okay, and now it's going to execute the automated tests. Just like you've seen before, at least one test will fail, so I have some information to look at, some debugging information, such as logs and screenshots. They should be done in a couple of seconds. 
Remember that this stage also includes reporting the results to test rail, so it might take a little longer. Okay, the execution of the tests is finished, and I should have the test results in test rail as well. Let's check what happened. I'm clicking the number one over here, which is our build, and this test results section is what I added with the JUnit command on the pipeline script. But what I want to see is the console output to check for the link to test rail. Everything was executed similarly to the freestyle project, and the link is here. I'm going to click on it to be directed to test rail to check the test results. It's pretty much the same as you've seen for the other test run, but if I go to the test runs page, you will see two test runs now. One for the freestyle project, and another for the pipeline project. Since the results are the same, they are exactly the same. Just one detail, as I used the code first approach, which automatically maps test cases, you may see that no test cases were duplicated. The first job created these test cases. Then the second one reused the same test cases and submitted new results for them. And to go full circle, let's go back to my test run that was just created with the pipeline project and check if I have the CI build URL. You can click here to go full circle and end up in Jenkins again. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.